It is just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Anna Sparks from SparksSystems.com. She's the founder and owner, coach, physiologist. She offers VO2 testing, coaching, and nutrition services. You're you're invested in your training, fitness, and nutrition, and we're invested in you and your goals. Anna Sparks, MS, founder and owner, coach, physiologist, has been working as a personal coach for over six years. She is remarkably qualified for a science-based approach to coaching and has an undeniable, genuine desire to help athletes realize their full potential. Anna's impressive athletic resume began with the Ole Miss Rebels soccer team at the University of Mississippi, where she also received a BS degree in exercise science and a master's degree in exercise physiology. She began dabbling in cycling and triathlons in 2004 after her collegiate soccer career. She realized her talent on the bike and transitioned to competitive cycling in 2009 and currently races professionally on a UCI women's road team, Visit Dallas DNA Pro Cycling. In addition, she competes in several endurance mountain, mountain bike events around Arizona. Anna was a graduate assistant strength and conditioning coach for the Ole Miss Rebels Athletic Department while completing her master's degree. During this time, Anna also completed an internship in strength and conditioning at Auburn University, working with Olympic swimmers. After completing her master's degree, she became the assistant soccer coach at the University of Arkansas and spent four years coaching the Lady Razorback soccer team. She moved to Phoenix in Arizona in 2008 to join the Arizona State Sun Devils as the assistant soccer coach and also worked for four years as a personal coach for Sigma Coaching before starting Spark Systems in 2015. Holy moly! Holy, you're qualified. A master's in science degree in exercise physiology. So where were you actually born? I was actually born in Indianola, Mississippi, uh, home of B.B. King. I don't know if you if you remember the late B.B. King, but he was from my hometown. Bill, and what town was that? Indianola, Mississippi. How do you spell that? I-N-D-I-A-N-O-L-A. Indianola, Mississippi. Um, I think the three coolest streets is... Um, Bourbon Street um, for their music, um, Bill Street in Memphis, where they have the BB King restaurant, and Second Avenue in Nashville. And most people, including myself, don't think of myself as a, a listener of jazz and country music. I, I grew up, I was born in 62, I, I like 70s uh, uh, classic rock. But when you're actually on Bill Street, you just love jazz. When you're on Second Avenue, I don't care how much you say you hate country music. When you're in Nashville on Second Avenue, everyone loves country music. Yeah, BB King was amazing. Incredible, incredible. Yeah. So you know, did we, you ever go to Bill Street? Oh yes, I've been to Bill Street quite a lot. Being yeah. um, that I went to Ole Miss, the University of Mississippi is only about an hour away from Memphis. So what town is that in? Ole Miss. Um, Ole Miss is in Oxford, Mississippi. Huh, Oxford, Mississippi. So we would go to Memphis all the time. So you were um, born in the same town as B.B. King. You got it. And what year did he die? Oh, he just passed. Um, let's see, maybe it's been maybe two years ago. And he lived a good long life. A long life. You know yeah. how old he was? You know, he was playing up until I saw him actually at the Wild Horse Pass Casino. Um, right, how it's been old is B.B. King? Several lived? years. I would say probably 80, 85 Somewhere right in there, yeah. Which goes to show you because I'm sure he had that southern country fried chicken diet. <laughs> There's nothing on Bill Street that you as a nutritionist would recommend. <laughs> and he uh, he lived in bars, secondhand smoke, eating that. Uh, 89. And he oh, lived to be 89. 89. So there it you shows go. you everything you talk about today doesn't matter. He lived to be 89. <laughs> and he was in, uh, in bars eating fried food. But uh, I, God, I love Bill Street. So then. Um, it sounds like you you start out in soccer. I did. I did. Um, soccer has been my passion my entire life, um, and so grew up as a grew up as a soccer player. And then with my goal being to be a collegiate soccer player, and so I went on a full ride to the University of Mississippi to play soccer. That's is that Ole Miss? That's Ole Miss. Ole Miss is yes. University of Mississippi. University of Mississippi, hotty toddy. Hotty toddy. And does anybody actually know how to spell Mississippi? Am I crooked letter, crooked letter, I, crooked letter, crooked letter, I, hump back, hump Albuquerque back, Albuquerque and Mississippi are two words that I just gave up on. So you went there on a soccer scholarship. I did. I which did. is under a lot of controversy right now, isn't it? Oh. Um, with, with the head concussion, because it started oh, out. Oh, sure, sure. It started out, well, it's weird in sports, and l l this is Awatuki Uncensored, so let's not talk about anything everybody agrees on. Let's talk about the controversy. Um, 
Um, it's weird, like in boxing, they wrap up their hands. Mm -hmm. If you ask, if I asked you to punch a brick wall as hard as you can, you'd go, dang. Mm -hmm. But if you wrap it all up, you'll smack it as hard as you can. And they, they protect their hands and then do concussions in the head. Soccer is just as crazy. You're not allowed to use your hands, but they're bouncing on the front of their head all day long. And it started off NFL concussions and then real-time sports with uh, on HBO. Um, they're talking about soccer. There's all these soccer players uh, in their 60s and saying this is an issue. And the last people to even recognize it um, when this last episode was um, on real sports was hockey. Mm. The hockey people, I mm -hmm. mean, they're, they're having all these problems. Some of the greatest hockey players. Um, and imagine going to the soccer industry and saying, oh, we're not going to use our head anymore. We're going to use our hands. That, know, that'd be like wild. going to the Catholic wild. church and saying, uh, we're going to we're going to be, we're going to allow a smoking pot during church. <laughs> I mean, what, what's the what's chance you right. can switch soccer to quit using their head? No, I think that it is crazy to think about. Um, but I it's know. something you're going to have to think about because... Living here in the hood for 30 years, no names mentioned, but I know NFL players who won't let their little kids play football. Mm -hmm. And I know moms are saying, uh, and we want to talk about cycling because I have, I know several moms say, oh no, you're not going to ride around these streets and get ran over by a car. And you're not going to play football and use your head. And you're not going to play soccer. So parents are already thinking long-term consequences of athletics. So, you know, when I think about, um, when I think about actually heading the ball and the technique that goes into heading it, the ball, heading the ball, I never right? Heard that. That's so cool. that's what in soccer, that's what it's called. When you actually make contact with the ball with your head, it's called heading the ball. And so if you actually make, put the force into the ball with your head, then the impact is is almost it's not as severe. Right. I'm not saying that it isn't severe at all, but it's less. But when that ball hits you and you're not prepared for it or you're not moving with forward motion, then it's very, all of a sudden you have to think that your brain hits your skull, right? Because it's like a whiplash going back. So typically if you teach a kid how to head the ball properly and actually make contact and put the force into the ball, then that is a big that's a big reason why they aren't receiving those concussions um, all the time. They're not as, as severe, but obviously anytime you get hit in the head with the ball or with anything, you receive some sort of, uh, some sort of blow, you know, some sort of uh, concuss, concussive. And, and you know what? Um, I know there's a lot of people for unions and against unions, and I know when unions started out, you know, there was child labor and it was all good. And, um, but um, it's pretty – the most pro-union thing I've heard in a long time is the – the, the scientists are saying that if you do get traumatized, it's really not that bad if you heal up for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And the NFL has a union, and they said, we're only going to do full contact twice a day, and then we have a game on Sunday. But they, but the college players don't have a union. Right. And their coaches are making them play every day. And that's one of the problems with soccer that they were saying on TV was that you get a kid that loves soccer, every single day he's out there bouncing that ball off the head, and the scientists are saying, Dude, your brain needs to recover from that. Can you do that Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and not Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday? So it's it's a it, well, it's a new issue. I mean, it's something they never talked totally. about when you were kids. When I was at Arizona State, I remember we had uh, the players would wear these almost like a headband, um, and I, I believe it was called like a. I want to say like a full 90, but I can't remember the exact brand or the name. And what it was, was almost like a little bit of a padding. And so, and it was right in the part of their forehead because when you head the ball, if you had it on the top of your head, you're definitely going to get a concussion. But if you had it properly and you head it with your forehead and you actually make that impact with the ball, that's where those headbands were kind of in the sweet spot. Um, and so they thought that it was less severe, you know, of a... Uh, of an impact. Well, my uh, I did that 23 and Me, mm -hmm. and I'm four and a half percent Neanderthal, so I'm sure none of this even <laughs> so applies to me. You're good to go. I was born a caveman. Mm -hmm. um, so, where was soccer invented? Because I've heard some wild stories. I've heard that that when people went to war, when they got the king, they cut off his head, and that was the and kicked <laughs> it around. That was origin of soccer. And I'm like. <laughs> I don't know if I, I, I need a Wikipedia quote on that. Do you ever know where it was? You know, I, I actually, I don't, but I would say that it's the world's most popular sport, Absolutely. you know, you and know so why? Europe. You know why? Why? Why would you guess? Um, because. Money's the answer. Mm. Um, it's the lowest cost sport. When I'm in Brazil, 
you see kids in shorts, barefoot, playing soccer, mm -hmm. and they will take a magic marker and write their idol's number on mm -hmm. their on their shirt. Um, imagine um, ice hockey taking off. How many hundreds of billions of dollars would it take to put uh, an ice rink in every major city of Asia, Africa, and South America? So right. since soccer is the lowest cost sport, it will always be number one. And if you look at sports popularity as the cost rises, the supply diminishes. Mm -hmm. It's like there's more cat, there's more Chevys than Cadillacs. When I was, um, I was playing in Costa Rica for a while and you totally hit the nail on the head with that. Um, in that when I came home, I decided I was, I was like, I want to make a coffee table book of every town that I visited in Costa Rica because every single town has a school, a church and a soccer field. And so that was obviously you knew where their priorities. So. Church. Yep. Soccer and what? School. In a school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's really the pillars of a community. I mean, mm -hmm. church, soccer, school. Yeah. And uh, so where would you fit in on that? You discuss soccer being athletics, physical fitness. Yeah. And then I would say, too, with the school in the teaching, you know. So um, when, I was in, when I was in Costa Rica, I was playing. Um, but then we also, when I went back, I helped coach some, some soccer down there for some younger kids. So you're a doctor of soccer. Uh, I don't know if I would well, say that I'm a doctor. Well, soccer, actually, uh, doctor comes from the Latin word docer, meaning to teach. Mm -hmm. Just like Bible comes from the Latin word meaning book. So a doctor is anybody is a teacher, and a, and a Bible is a book. Mm -hmm. And so you, I, I call you a soccer docer. I like that. Doctor of soccer. So Thank how you. many children do you have now? You know, I am a stepmom. Okay. So I was married two years ago. My husband, Clint Sparks. And Clint had a little girl um, at the time, Taylor Sparks. That's uh, my granddaughter's name. Oh, really? Taylor. Love that. Um, and Taylor, I came into her life, let's see, when she was four. And um, she's wonderful. She just turned nine on Monday. And so I have been having a blast uh, being with Taylor. But I didn't have any children of my own. So... Um is uh, well, that's what I just call the modern parent. I mean, people ask family grandchildren, I go, well, some of my boys have girls with that already had kids, but I, I just count them all the same. Um, um, we're all the same. Um, would you let her go into cycling on the street, playing soccer with her head, kickboxing, MMA, punch to the head, football? Um. Are you starting to have these maternal instincts saying, have we learned anything from the previous generation? Like, I used to love cycling with one of your friends. Yes. Uh, Jane Manili. Jane Manili. And Wendy. Mm -hmm. Are you friends with Wendy? Oh, yeah, with Wendy. And um, it just seemed that every single year we bike, we knew someone, mm, we knew someone that got ran over. And one of them got ran over on Pecos and 17th, and we all cried for a week. Mm. And we met at um, a place and did a ceremonial bike ride. And, and so it's kind of weird, the, the culture, like, if you said, I'm going to sell my car and ride a motorcycle to work, people would say, well, that's crazy. That's dangerous. But if you take out the engine and say, well, I'm just going to pedal. It's actually, I'd say, oh, then it's all good. Right. But it's like, well, I'm out there cycling so I can delay my coronary heart bypass, you know, a month or two, not to be ran over by somebody texting. It's really scary. It's really scary. And I actually, my husband um, loves to mountain bike, and I feel so much better when he's on that mountain bike on the trails as opposed to being on a road bike on the road. Um, I am terrified. He used to commute to work and I, I felt like my- Commute to work he on to, a bike? On a bike, on a bicycle, on a road bicycle. And I'll tell you that hour of, that, of my day until I knew he was safe at work, oh, I was terrified um, that something was gonna happen to him. And not necessarily because he didn't know how to ride that bike, but just like you said, people texting, Well, that's not weird, because Ryan always tells me I should ride my bike to work. Now I'm starting to question his motives. <laughs> my, so, uh, yeah, so when your spouse buys you a bike and says commute to work and then feeds you bacon in the morning, <laughs> there might be another, yeah, but yeah, it's true. And you know what, when I moved here 30 years ago, um, what is now Biscuits used to be called Chewies. Okay. And there were a lot of Harley enthusiasts that would meet there and ride around Ahwatukee. And I knew a lot of them. And a lot of them, one by one, they would come to a close call. You know, they'd come to an intersection and, turn, and somebody just plow past. And, and I know at least four or five people that said, that sold their Harley saying, no more. Um, you could do it in Ahwatukee 30 years ago when there were mm -hmm. 25,000 people. But now with 85,000, 
they, they say it's not safe anymore. Right. I agree. I agree. It's really scary. So, so what are you doing now at SparksSystems.com? So um, it's actually SparksSystems.net. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, that's okay. I was never told I was the sharpest tool in the <laughs> so, um, so if they go to Sparks Systems, so your last name is Sparks, plural. Correct. Anna Sparks Systems. Dot net. Mm -hmm. What are my homies going to find there? So you're going to find a... Is that you on the bike? That is. My That's gosh. Me. I know. So I am now transitioning out of racing professionally um, and have just decided that my company, um, I wanted to put a lot of energy into it and put a lot more energy into my family now that I am racing. I mean, excuse me, now that I am not racing um, and recently married. And so I decided that I would get out of the racing. Um, it kept me on the road. You know, I raced a circuit that we, you know, when you're single, it's fine because no one really, you know, is bothered if you're there or not. Um, but what happened was as I was racing, I started um, coaching as well because it didn't really matter if I was sitting at home um, I could be anywhere and be able to coach my clients. And also I found that they had a lot of respect for someone that was actually in the sport and doing something that they loved and being very competitive and doing it at the highest level. Um, and so I started, that's when I started coaching. Um, and everyone that I coached, though, everything was based off of, they would first have to come in and have a metabolic test done. Okay, no. explain what a metabolic test is. Okay. That's over the head. So, so a metabolic test, you've heard of like a VO2 max test before where, like, think about the Gatorade. I assume 99% of our listeners have not. Think about the Gatorade commercial where the guy's on the treadmill and there's the mask on his face and he's running really hard, you know, and then, so that is actually, he's performing a VO2 max test. Well, the issue, VO2 max is going to tell us what the size of that person's engine is. What does their overall physiology look like, right? But when you're doing a VO2 max test, leading up to that maximum effort, you're getting a lot of metabolism data. And metabolism is how your body is processing food for fuel, right? So I can see in a test, when I'm measuring gas exchange, so with that mask on their face, I'm collecting their expired gases. And from that, I'm able to tell you exactly how many calories you are utilizing from fat, how many calories you're utilizing from carbohydrate, and also at what intensities or also what heart rate you are utilizing those two energy sources. And when you change over from utilizing fat to fuel primarily to utilizing carbohydrate. And so then... Well, what, what about the third, protein? So protein, you don't get energy benefit from protein. And so typically when you're doing this test, you're really only focused on those two energies, on those two um, energy components, right? Which would be fat and carbohydrate, right? If you, with protein though, I will say this, if you um, eat an excess amount of protein, it actually, and you're not able to metabolize that protein, especially someone being, um, like myself, being a little bit smaller, I don't require that much protein, right? So um, how tall are you and what do you weigh? Is that too? No, it's okay. I am, I'm a, I say I'm 5'3 with my shoes on, um, so probably 5'2. Um, and I weigh about 100, 112 pounds, so. Wow, that is, uh, that is fit. Yeah, yeah, that but. Is fit. What happens with that protein though, when you don't metabolize that protein, it actually turns to sugar. And so it's just like you are eating a bunch of carbohydrate, you know? And so think about it along those lines. When you look at fad kind well, of diets. Well, here's, what, here's why I feel sorry for um, uh, all my homies listening is that it, I'm 55. It seems like every year there's a different fat diet. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I consider, I mean, God, there was the South Beach diet, the caveman diet, the paleo diet. They're every time you turn around. You got it. So what, what do you, how do you believe? So and, we, and, how, and how are they going to listen to you and say, okay, this is the fat of the week? Sure, sure. But so you got what, a master's in science degree and you're a professional athlete. We are using the science in order to create a lifestyle change, right? So this is no diet. This is we feed you for your metabolism. And how do we know what your metabolism looks like? We have to measure it. And so if you were to come in and do a metabolic test with us, first I would do what we call a resting metabolic test. Well, first, how, well, how much is it? 
Okay, so if we were to do just a resting test alone. No, no, what, what you recommend. So we would do what we call a comprehensive package with okay. you, and that would be three, $375. And the resting test is what we would start with, and we would determine what your resting energy expenditure is. Okay, so we would have you sit comfortably in a chair, mask on your face, collecting those expired gases, and we would determine exactly how many calories you need every day just for brain function, just for survival. Right. And how long would that? Would so that would take, take about 10 to 15 minutes. 10 to 15 okay. minutes. So I'd be asleep. Nope. You would. That would be the <laughs> only instruction we would give you. Relax, but do not fall asleep. Okay? okay. So right after you're finished with the resting test, we would put you on a bike or a treadmill, depending upon what your preference was. And then we would take you through a graded exercise test, right? And that exercise test would be an active metabolic test. So and that's, that's what most of the people on TV think you're doing at the heart doctor. You got it. Yep. Okay. So it is. It's essentially just like doing a stress test. Okay. And, and what do you call it? An acting? Uh, An active metabolic test. An active metabolic test. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what we would do, we would take you through this, through this graded exercise test where the intensity would continue to increase. So like if you were on a bicycle and we were doing this active metabolic test, I would um, increase the, the resistance on your back wheel, say that you were on a compu trainer or on an upright bike, I would increase the watts, the resistance on your, on your bike in order to take you through various stages, okay? And by the end, it's going to get pretty hard. But what I will ask is that you just maintain a constant cadence during this time. So as that resistance is being applied, what is the cadence? You're, just, you're just maintaining at least 60 plus RPMs. So a cadence is RPMs on a bike? Yep, revolutions okay. per minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we would continue going all the way until, you're, until you were at your max, okay? So, or until your cadence dropped down below 60 RPMs. And then we would stop the test, okay? You should make it 66, because <laughs> we all grew up on a 33 Oh, there record. you go. Sure. Or the small ones were 75. So like I said. You got to put it in music terms. It's be yeah, 60 plus though. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the um, and so then once we gather the data from that active metabolic test, we can now see exactly what you are expending from fat and carbohydrate when you're active. And we take the resting test and the active test and we put those numbers together and we will create a meal plan for you for your metabolism. Okay, so it essentially takes all the guesswork out of it for you. And you can send those meals to the house. You got it. So I partnered with a meal prep company. Ryan, send me the link to the meal prep company. What is it called? It's called Benny Plates. Um, they are out of the Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine right here in Tempe. Okay, it's spelled Benny Plates. B-E-N-E. B-E-N-E. -E. Yep, Plates. Plates. Mm -hmm. Benny Plates. You're too young to know what a Benny is. What remember is a Benny? El What's a Benny? Um, remember the Elton John? Remember Elton John? Oh yeah, Benny, Benny and, and the, the Jets. Jets. Uh huh. Um, Ryan, what was the what was the drug that Elton was referring to on Benny and the Jets? Oh gosh. Oh really? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry to go dark. I'm the loving. Podcast. I'm learning. I'm learning so um, much. But wait, it says people have insisted that the song is about drugs that are popular time, a kind of methyl methamphetamine known as brown Bennies. Yeah. Just like in his other song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Uh -huh. What was that about? Acid. LSD. Yeah. And they named Lucy, who's the oldest um, homo sapien, homo erectus ever found, who's at ASU. Ah. She's a 36 inch tall girl that was 17 years old. And they were, um, when they discovered her, they were listening to. Uh, um, Lucy that. in the Sky with Diamonds. Yeah. So but I'm sorry to get on these. No, because when I, when I was many coaching. Plates, when I was coaching so that's how you issue. lose weight. There's amphetamines in the plates of food. <laughs> you got it. And it yeah, raises your yeah. metabolism right, and burns right. all the Did you find that um, website? Benny Bennyplates.com. The meal prep company, once we create their meal plan, we can send it to the meal prep company and they will prepare that meal and deliver it to their house. Or however many meals they can prepare every meal for them and it will be delivered to their door. Is it like daily or a weekly or? Whatever you sign up for, right? Yeah. So they typically deliver two days a week. Um, and so you decide, do I just want lunch and dinner? You know, do I want however many meals you would like for that week? I currently have all my meals delivered. Do you? Who do yeah. you use? Um, Domino's Pizza, uh, um, uh -huh. Rosati's. I, I see. Mm -hmm. And now they have Uber Eats. So yep. you could have Macayos. Okay, so here it is. So BennyPlates.com. So is there a man or a woman named Benny? Um, you know, 
the guy that is the owner is a guy by the name of Chris Faddis, and that is who we correspond with. So where Benny came from, I'm not sure. There is a story, I believe. Um, Benny Plates started out as they did meal prep for the chronically ill. And so they would deliver meals to the house. And why I chose Benny Plates is because knowing that, all their ingredients, everything that they source has to be of the utmost high qual the highest quality. Everything is organic, you know, grass fed, every you know, just like I said, of the highest quality. And so I thought that's who I want putting together the meals. So for how long have you been doing this with Benny and your program? We have right? only been working with Benny Plates for probably about three to four months now. Mm -hmm. um, there were a couple other meal prep companies that, that we tried that we liked, um, but we really appreciated Benny Plates and we liked their, liked their services. Yeah. So, yeah. And so any, any Sparks um, athlete, any Sparks client at all, they can go on to, on to Benny Plates' website. They can type in that they're a Sparks athlete and they put in um, um, a couple numbers from their metabolic test and then Benny Plates knows exactly what to do. And they'll if do I entered that I was an athlete, they would just kick me off. <laughs> I, I um, joined Plenty of Fish, and when they saw my picture, they deleted my account and said, dude, you're a whale. What? Come back when you've lost 50 pounds <laughs> in our fish. But, um, but so, um, I mean, you, you have a master's in science. You, you, you taught coaches at a university level. Is your um, target market People who are trying to become professional athletes. So or let's talk. Old, let's fat, bold grandpas like let's me. Let's talk a little bit about that because um, the metabolic testing is actually done for anyone, right? You don't have to be an athlete. So I was doing it only for athletes for about ten years, though, and I was coaching a primary care doctor. And this doctor, um, he was actually he was an athlete of mine that I was coaching for Lodija a race in Utah, a 200 mile road race. Lodija? Lodija, mm-hmm. Okay. And um, he came in and I said, before we start anything, you need to come in and we need to do a resting test and we need to do a bike test on you. And then I will put together a training plan and a meal plan for you to prepare you for Lodija. So he came in, he did his resting test, he did his bike test, we went over the results and he looked at me and he said, Anna, how can I get this in my clinic? My patients are living longer, but their quality of life is so poor. I need this program in my clinic. And I was like, hmm, I've all, you know, I've done this for athletes for the last 10 years, but it really applies to everyone. And, and so two months later, we opened in his clinic. And that was the other website that you saw, Advanced Metabolic Testing. So our other- How did you know I saw that? You could just tell on the phone? Yep. My gosh. So advanced metabolic testing is the clinical side of our company. And is we, that your company? That's advanced metabolic And it was, it was a doctor in Ahwatukee or Tempe? No, it was actually a doctor that is out in Gold Canyon. And where's Gold Canyon? Gold Canyon is By, going towards Globe. Okay, so past okay. Mesa. Um, and is that you too? That is, yep. My gosh. That's me. Um, yeah, I mean, not to get sidetracked on the equation, but I always thought the um, the strangest debate on the uh, doping and drug testing in professional mm -hmm. athletes is that I always think, number one, it should be legal because if those guys all want to experiment on themselves, who cares about Olympic athletes? What if it could get grandpa out of a wheelchair? Yeah. What if grandpa could start um, doing anabolic steroids and get him on testosterone and human growth hormone and now he can walk upstairs and take a shower instead of getting a chair lift? And if you study medicine from the early beginning, like like when Joseph, when, when Salk invented the, the polio vaccine, guess who the first person that took the vaccine was? Who? Him. Mm -hmm. And guess who the next 10 were? His, his grad students. Yeah, okay. And if you look at the history of drug making from 1700s, 1800s, groups that were passionate about curing disease would say, yeah, I'll volunteer, I'll eat this lotion, potion, whatever. And I think that, I, I mean, I don't really care. The, the, the latest outrage is someone on the bobsled team was using performance drugs. Shoot, if they want to be the guinea pigs for all this stuff, I just say be transparent, because maybe if you freaks tried everything possible, 
maybe it will apply to the masses where we can get grandma and grandpa to use this stuff. I mean, if it makes you run, jump, or bike faster, maybe grandma can now go to Safeway by herself yep. and not need a cane and a wheelchair and park in the handicap zone. So what we're is doing... Is that the craziest idea you've heard? No, or? no. I think, that, I think you're spot on. But what we're doing, instead of using drugs, we're actually using food and exercise as medicine. Well, Thomas Edison said that... Um, the only drug was your diet. Mm -hmm. And Tom. he's absolutely correct. And he was one of the smartest inventors we ever had. So what we do in the clinics, and now, um, earlier you said you were talking about the metabolic test being similar to a stress test, and that's exactly the case. So when we are in a clinic, a patient will be referred by their doctor to come over, and typically what we're seeing in the clinics are type 2 diabetics, um, COPD, asthmatics, um, Hypertension, high cholesterol, because because our you, program. You're reading my health history, aren't you? Our program. Did, did you hack into my? <laughs> so say that again. Then you did that fast. Type two diabetes. Okay, type two diabetics. COPD. COPD. Asthmatics. Um, hypertension, high cholesterol, um, any cardiovascular disease, and these patients are getting referred by their provider, by their primary care doctor, to us, and they come in. We start them out, we do a resting metabolic test, and then we take them into um, pulmonary function testing, so it's called spirometry, and we measure how well, there are there any obstructions or restrictions to breathing, so how well are their lungs actually working? Would there be any reason why, from a pulmonary standpoint, that they wouldn't be able to exercise or condition, right? And then we put them on a bike, mask on their face, 12 lead EKG, blood pressure cuff, pulse oximeter, and we take them through that graded exercise test. So from that, we take them to, we're looking at VO2, right? So their VO2 max, VO2 max is directly what related. What is the V actually center? The O2 is oxygen. So it's volume of oxygen. Vo okay, VO2 mm -hmm. is volume of oxygen. So uh, your VO2 max is going to be the maximum amount of oxygen that you can consume in one minute, right? So what that is directly correlated to is a higher VO2 is directly correlated to a lower risk of developing cardiovascular disease. Okay, but what if she's listening to you and she says, I'm already type 2 diabetic. I already have COPD. Is any of that reversible? Absolutely. And that's what our program is for. So Absolutely. Absolutely. You didn't even blink. Every day, every day we are reversing type 2 diabetes. We are getting people off of their blood pressure medications. We are getting people off of their metformin. It has been is for... for diabetes. So what happens is after they finish with our, with our testing, we are able to give them an exercise prescription in their optimal heart rate training zones, right? Which is going to make them be able to utilize more fat for fuel. So we call it their optimal fat burning zone. We teach them about that. We also teach them how to use that rating of perceived exertion scale, that RPE scale, right? Where if they are at a- RPE at a, stands for what? Rating of perceived exertion. Oh, okay, rating of perceived Because perceived you may have what? perceived exertion. Okay. Because you may have a patient that comes in that we say, hey, here's your optimal fat burning zone. It is 100, 100 beats per minute to 110 beats per minute. And they say, well, I don't, I'm not going to wear a heart rate monitor, so I wouldn't know how to track that. Well, that optimal fat burning zone correlates very highly to this rating of perceived exertion scale. So it's answering the question, how do I feel? And so if you are breathing hard but can maintain a conversation, well, you're in that optimal fat burning zone. And so we try to take all of the, the reasons why they would not adhere out of the equation. So, so you're saying that the optimal zone is you still have to be able to have a conversation. Sure. That would be aerobics. Right. And then if your exercise is so hard that you can't talk, right. then there's no oxygen in then your Then now, we're out of that zone, and we're now like more towards producing more lactic acid, right? Which we, we know that lactic acid accumulation, what happens is when people are exercising at too high of intensities, lactic acid is accumulating at a rapid, rapid rate where they can't clear it fast enough with their breath. Right? So what happens is that lactic acid begins to build in your muscles. It spills over into your blood. Your blood's in direct contact with your brain. And your brain's like, wait, hold on. 
it's getting really acidic in here, I'm gonna make your muscles stop contracting. And so for people that go out and they try to exercise hard all the time in excess of that lactate threshold, what happens is now they are producing copious amounts of lactic acid and one, they're uncomfortable. They don't wanna do it again the next day, right? Because they're sore, right? because they had all this lactic acid accumulation. And so if you want someone to adhere to an exercise plan, we're looking for consistency and we really want to build that aerobic base, that lower end, which is around that optimal fat burning zone, right? Because we want them to utilize fat for fuel. When they exercise at higher intensities, all they're doing is utilizing, they're going straight into carbohydrate and they're using carbohydrate for fuel. And carbohydrate is a very quick burning fuel. Fat is like, if you think about the gas tanks, right? Fat is like diesel fuel, right? You can go forever on your fat stores because fat is a massive, massive molecule, right? But carbohydrate, on the other hand, is a very quick burning fuel. You blast through, the, blast through those carbohydrate stores at a rapid, rapid rate. So it's more like rocket fuel, okay? And so what we wanna do is we wanna, we wanna keep these patients and athletes utilizing fat for as long as possible. And so how we do that, though, we have to first determine that point in which they change over from utilizing fat to utilizing carbohydrate, and then we give them proper exercise intensities coupled with the proper nutrition for their metabolism, and there you have that winning combination. There you have that medicine for them. We test in the clinic. This is covered by insurance. Do they work out in your clinic? The exercise, the, only the exercise test. They don't do any other exercise besides that in our clinic. So, so do, you, do you recommend a gym or the stuff they can do at home? We do. We give them do an you exercise. you know who the original exercise guy was that started this whole revolution? Who? You're too young. Who you know, was like, it? What did you say? You were 35? 35. So I'm 20 years older. It was Jack LaLanne. Mm. And so um, the advent of television came. Yep. Then he was the first guy to have a TV show. And um, what I love the most about Jack Lane is not only the impact it had on my mom and my five sisters, but how he knew back then in the 50s, everyone was poor, that um, he said, you, you, didn't need a, you don't need bench press and weights, do a push-up. The only thing you needed for Jack Lane was a chair. Mm -hmm. And I, I love the fact that every exercise he did, you could do on your front room floor, and occasionally you'd have to have a chair, but usually the chair was, he was, he was safety, you know, hang on to this chair sure. while you squat so sure. you don't fall down. But yeah. love Jack Lane. So exercise is a component but this nutrition piece, so after they finish with their testing, we give them their exercise prescription, which is, which is very basic, but it lays out exactly what their optimal fat burning zone is. And we tell them exactly how long they need to stay there and we progress them along. But then they see our registered dietitian who puts together a meal plan in conjunction with that exercise program that for their metabolism. No, that's, uh, that's one of my techs that does some of the testing for me. Okay, so the advanced metabolic, so this would be on your advanced metabolic testing website? No, Correct. or the sparksystems.net. So sparksystems.net is our performance side of things. So it, it very much caters more to like the athletic But population. the nutrition you were starting to talk about would be on that website? It's on both. Okay, it's on mm -hmm. both. Mm -hmm. so, and so the advanced metabolic testing is in the clinics. It's on the clinical side. And the advanced metabolic testing is covered by insurance if you have a diagnosis. So all of those diagnoses that I was telling you about, those patients come in and it's covered by their insurance, right? But our program is really a preventative program. So I don't want to see all of these sick people. I want to help them. I want them to come in and see us so that we can prevent them from getting type 2 diabetes, prevent them from getting hypertension, high cholesterol, right? Well, I mean, that's the way to dentistry. I mean, you want them, you know, you tell everybody, if you see the hygienist every six months do what she says, you'll never see me. Mm -hmm. Everybody that comes in with a toothache, they haven't seen the hygienist. So there's a preventative side. Right. And then there's an acute. So we see, sides, we see these patients four times a year. Okay, so they come in every three months and we continue to progress them along, all right? What percent of your practice is preventive so you don't get type two, COPD, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and what percent is active trying to reverse it? Oh, it's, it's more the people that have the diagnosis, way higher. Awesome, and, so you are a doctor. Well, so, but that is why I wanna get the word out though to people 
to come in before they develop this, right? Because like I said, it's only covered by insurance if you have a diagnosis. But what percent of your practice are they already sick? Um, of the of advanced metabolic testing, almost every single one of them. Nice. Because so you, you, you know what the, the first medication was? The first, the first cure? The first medication? Exercise. Um, it was a physician in England, and every time the um, British Royal Fleet would come back, because they, they ruled, you know, the sun never set on the British Empire, every time that fleet came back from a three- or four-year deal, a quarter of the crew was dead from scurvy. Mm -hmm. And one time, a boat came back, and nobody had it, and the physician recognized something happened. Quarantine, everybody said so something huge happened. And they took a meticulous account of everybody, everything. He said, there's some, something's different. And the only thing that was different is they had a barrel of limes. Mm. And he said, something is, something in this citrus, vitamin C for citrus, something in this citrus prevented scurvy. And to this day, the British Navy people are called limeys. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and you, and Americans believe that you're gonna treat everything with a, a prescription pill. But the first pill was a Lyme, mm -hmm. and Thomas Edison said the only medicine is your diet. Right. And you agree with that? Absolutely, so I think that with our program too, we know if our patients and our athletes just adhere to the nutrition component of our program, they're going to have performance gains, they're going to decrease their medication, they're going to combat disease, they're going to get better all around. If with they just, just nutrition. With just the nutrition alone. Now you add in the exercise, which I say it's typically 25% exercise, 75% oh, nutrition. Oh man, yeah. Absolutely. So abs but that, are made in the kitchen, not but the gym. You got it. Exercise though, what that does is that gives you that stress relief. It gives you, because you're breathing, and again, back to that lactic acid production, when you can expel more CO2 and you get that respiratory rate up, then you can combat stress and anxiety, right? So how, so how, um, I mean, have you ever seen someone on an oxygen tank go without using it? I mean, how much reversible is type two diabetes? I mean, can you literally not be type two diabetic anymore? I mean, yes. Is that achievable? You can get it. You can get those those insulin levels down, those blood sugar levels, fasting blood 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 sugar levels down, and absolutely you can. You can go back to a place of being full blown diabetic to what would they would call pre diabetic. So is so if you're sick, you go to advancedmetabolictesting.com. And if you're trying to prevent, you go to sparksystems.net. Is that a fair sure. assessment? Mm -hmm. Is that one way of saying mm -hmm. it? Yeah. It's kind of like you either come to cash pay or insurance. Yeah. And, and insurance is a, um, a I, I think it's one of the worst things. It's, a, it's really difficult. It's been really, really difficult. I would love for our program to become a standard of care with these insurance companies, where but, the insurance companies would mandate that anyone that they insured come through our program and come through it early. So my goal- I would completely disagree with you on that. Can I? Sure, absolutely. I mean, you're in better shape than me. You kick my ass, you're 20 nah. years younger. Mm -hmm. um, well, they, they um, insurance is an actuarial risk analysis versus moral hazard. So in Ahwatukee, I've lived here 30 years, everyone has fire insurance, and I've seen three homes burn down. So we all pay a little bit, three people make claim. Car insurance, everybody has car insurance, 1% stacks their car. Mm -hmm. um, health insurance, every single person's gonna die. Um, insurance is for a um, actuarial rare risk, like you were, um, broke your leg, you came down with cancer, or you, um, you know, something happened out of nowhere. You know, your child was born with a hole in his heart. But um, most of the premium goes to um, just routine care. And when humans don't have skin in the game, like you go to the only free dental clinics in Arizona, you go to them, you say, what's your problem? Well, half the people don't even show up. Mm -hmm. They have no skin in the game. Yep. So this iPhone was $800. My human body, you're saying you can analyze me for half the price of an iPhone. They don't need to be told that the government insurance, Medicaid, Medicare, or their employer 
is responsible for the house because with their for their human body, they have skin in their own house. Mm -hmm. So they paint their house, clean their house, get the carpets done, the windows done. They're always mowing their yard. They're they have skin total in their car. They they might park at the back of the Safeway parking lot so no one dings it. But the body. It's like, well, my knees go out, and I got to get two artificial knees. I mean, they don't even do a copayment. You realize, and just Medicare, if they said, you know, there's a 5% copayment on your deal, and then she'd say, well, it's, it's 50000 for two new knees. And they'd say, well, 5% of 50000 that's 2500 Hell, it's only 375 to go to you. Maybe if I dropped 100 pounds, mm -hmm. I wouldn't need two knees. But since Grandpa has no skin in the game, he says, well, you're the doctor. So give me two artificial knees. They have to, it's not whether it's right or wrong right. or woulda, shoulda, could. it's what works. And with humans, they have to have skin in the game or they don't pay attention. There's $700 billion dollars of Medicare fraud. You know why there's Medicare fraud? Because they don't have to make a co-payment. Mm -hmm. They don't, you say, well, how much does that cost? Oh, I don't know. Well, if they had to pay 5%, and then they sit there and say, wow, this hospital in Phoenix charged me $50,000 for my knee, but I'm from Mississippi. And I just called a hospital there in Mississippi, and it's only thirty-five thousand for a knee. So, do I want to pay five percent of thirty-five thousand or five percent of fifty thousand? The only way you're going to get them healthier is they have skin in the game. And at three hundred and seventy-five, do they spend that much on beer and cigarettes and weed? Oh, I mean, we have we have one medical marijuana dispensary. Um, they sell liquor at almost every corner in Ahwatukee. Um, the three most addictive drugs in uh, America are sugar at every fast food in 7-Eleven, nicotine, and um, what's the third one? Um, coffee, caffeine, mm. nicotine, and sugar is sold at every corner, and um, it, it's crazy. So I, I would tell them, dude, it's three seventy-five. Think of all this. Think of, go over your credit card and look at all the unhealthy places you spent money on at Mikayos, at beer, cigarettes. Whatever, do you think they spend three seventy five a month on stuff on Oreos and chips Absolutely. and Doritos and fast food? Uh, Starbucks. These people say, "Well, is there is Social Security going to be there when I'm gone?" The average person goes five dollars Starbucks every morning. Mm -hmm. That's your IRA funding. If you say, "Well, if you're twenty five and you skip Starbucks and put that money in a cup every day, you could buy a two thousand dollar IRA every year, and you do that from twenty five to sixty five, you would be what they call a millionaire. You'd have one with six zeros, but they want to buy the Starbucks every day, and then at sixty five and have nothing. Say, well, government, come get me. Yep. And so when you say, oh, we'll take care of you when you're sixty five, then you don't have skin in the game. So I would own that three seventy five, and I would start the attitude that, dude, if your body ain't worth three seventy five, then quit. And these people that do the meal um, delivery plans, I've seen studies where most people say, oh, the meal delivery is too expensive. Right. And then they go to Safeway and buy $100 worth of haagen dazs and Doritos and Coke and Pepsi right. and, and Coors. We, my husband and I went and did a cost analysis on the meal prep because we were like, okay, how much do we spend normally if we go to the grocery store and cook every night? And how much are we, would we spend with this meal prep company? Exactly the same. It was exactly the same. Plus, I have no cleanup time now, you know. And in the in the mornings, whenever we're getting ready to go to work, grab that lunch. It's already done, and it's in, it's for your metabolism. It's in the right proportion. All you got to do is just heat it up. So, what percent body fat are you and your husband? What, what is it different for boys and girls? Is there, are, yeah, is there a you know, target but don't, area? It doesn't really even matter. Body body fat doesn't really doesn't really matter that much. When people come in and they actually start our program, we typically measure their waist circumference, though, um, because if they do, if say they're sedentary and they start exercising, we're going to increase their lean muscle mass, which then means that maybe they weigh a little bit more or they're not losing weight per se but they're losing inches things are fitting differently fitting better but also the main thing that they find is that they feel good they've got sustained energy because one of the main things that we teach them is about what we call time restricted eating so we have our patients and our athletes eat on a window of time so what does that mean our main goal is to keep insulin quiet and when people are eating all day, every day, insulin is staying elevated. And so what we try to teach them to do is, in the clinic, we start them out with, pick an hour of the day to stop eating by. We give them one goal when they come in for their first, first round. 
pick an hour of the day to stop eating by. So if you eat dinner at six o'clock and you're finished eating by 6.30, no more food after 6.30, you're done. You can have some water if you want to before bed, but you're done, no more. And so what essentially that does is that at least has them fasting now through the night and then when they wake up in the morning, if they are having breakfast, whatever, then they can start. That's the first time they come in. The second time they come in, we actually give them a little bit more definitive window of time to eat on, right? So it's either, usually if someone is eating six meals a day, what does that mean? Their insulin is staying elevated because you always have an insulin response whenever you put anything in your mouth. If you put sugar in, processed grains and carbohydrates, you're going to have even bigger insulin response, right? So what happens is you eat breakfast in the morning, insulin goes up and it stays up here and then you stop eating and it starts to drop and then you're like oh i need a snack or i need a starbucks boom insulin goes back up okay and so now it's time for uh lunch insulin had started going back down it's back up again staying up staying up okay now i'm i've hit that lull it's about three o'clock in the day i need something else to eat boom insulin insulin's back up and then it's time to go home and eat dinner insulin stays elevated all day long well what does that what does that cause diabetes. Okay. So insulin resistance is caused by insulin staying high all the time. And so we teach these patients in the clinic that come in that have any of these, plus most of them are obese, right? They do have that. Why are you looking at me? Huh? When you said obese, (laughs) you're just staring staring me down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ryan, obesity. (laughs) Um. So we, we teach them about this time restricted eating we never say the word fasting in there because fasting is like a and charge, what, what is the, what is the goal on a 24-hour day what okay. is the goal so we typically have them go if science. we can go between eight and ten hours of a feeding window that's going to be the best for these people what do you and your husband what's your husband's first name his name is clint Clint with a C? Yep, Clint. Clint, Clint Sparks. I got a friend with Clint with a K. Clint Sparks. Mm-hmm. So do you and Clint and your daughter have the same window? Yeah, we do. And what is, but what is, Taylor, what is your window, window? our daughter, though, we actually, hers is more like 12 hour, a 12 hour window. Um, well, I take, that, I take that back. She typically stays on a 10 hour, 10 hour window as well. Um, Clint and I typically don't start eating until about... 10 a.m., 10 or 11 every day, and then we stop eating by 6 p.m. usually um, at the latest 7. And so what that what happens then is insulin is only elevated during certain hours of the day. Plus, we eat for our metabolism during those 8 to 10 hours every day. Well, 11 to 6 would be 7 hours. 10 to Sorry. 7 p.m. would be 9 hours. Okay, so we'll say that if I went from... From ten to six, then we're at eight out. We're at eight hours. Yeah. Not to be. I mean, obviously, okay. you're uh, got a master's degree in science. You're a professional athlete, but I know my homies. I mean, I, I've had patients out here for thirty years. What do you say to the guy who's rolling? Oh, it's another fad. It's another fad. Next next year, it'll be it'll be. You Try know. it. Yeah. 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 So Come what? in. What we do is typically we do a two week kind of like a two week, uh, we call it our pre-phase. And so after you come in and do the testing and we determine what your metabolism looks like, then, and we provide you with that meal plan, we're gonna start you out with a two week, it's almost like we pull out all of the refined grains and carbohydrate out of your diet. Not carbohydrate in general, right? I'm talking about processed carbohydrates, right? All of your, um, anything that's packaged. We have you eat as much as you want, fruit or uh, vegetables, higher fat, right? So your avocados, your nuts, your nut butters, your salmon, your eggs, your meat, any of that stuff. But anything that comes in that package, we're going to ask you to not eat for, for two weeks. Well, you know, I, I, uh, um, I love YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. And I um, went to, I searched one time about reading labels, mm-hmm. to edu- educate myself on reading labels. And the guy just punched me between the eyes and said, dude, if it has a label on it, you shouldn't be eating it. There's no label on strawberries and grapes and celery and carrots and radishes or meat or fish or chicken. He says, here's how you read a label. If there's a label on it, don't eat it. Uh, I like that. I like that. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Because everything we do, it's just a whole foods approach. There's no, there's no 
diet. There's no gimmick to it, right? We're going to feed you from your metabolism and we're just going to ask you to eat for your metabolism and try to keep that window a little bit smaller so you're not eating all day long because what happens is it impacts your sleep. But um, a lot of people, again, people are just people. I, I, I love them all. I mean, because, um, you know, if, if you have a problem with a person, it, it's your problem. You, you, your expectations are too high. You know how you get happy? You lower your expectations. I know, <laughs> I know that 90% of all my patients, um, with, you know, they floss. I tell them to floss every day. They floss twice a year, and my hygienist does it for them both time. Mm -hmm. But you don't be mean and condescending and kick them out. They're, they're just humans. They're just trying to get through life. A lot of people listen to you and say, well, you know what? I can't do this because, um, well, 14% can't quit drinking every day. Um, another 19% um, are saying, well, how's I get a VO2 max? I still smoke. Um, some are saying, I, I, I can't do any of this stuff because I'm, I'm so fat and my knees hurt so bad. I mean, so what do you, what do you say to the people who just say, uh, and, and, and the craziest one, have you been reading um, the research on um, these ED pills like Viagra and Cialis? Mm -mm. Um, it's actually the craziest thing in the world. I mean, the only goal of a species is, is to survive long enough to keep spiraling your DNA. We, we live as a species, individually we draw that, but the main goal of a species is to survive long enough to reproduce. Now you can't reproduce and you're taking a pill? The reason you can't reproduce is because you have diabetes, you have high blood pressure, you have all, so the mortality rate, I mean, when your reproductive organ stops working, why are you going to the pharmacist and getting a pill? Dude, you're, you're about to die. When you can't reproduce again and you're a mammal, you say, dude, I can't even reproduce anymore. And then if you would, and they're trying to tell physicians, dig down. Don't give them a prescription for a Viagra and Dill. Don't give them a damn prescription. Mm -hmm. Find out what's wrong. They have high blood pressure. They have COPD. They have type 2 diabetes. They don't exercise. They eat Oreos and they wake up to a Starbucks and a cigarette. At lunch, they go to Taco Bell. At night, they go stop at Brad's place and have uh, drinks mm -hmm. and deep fried cheese. And then you're giving them an ED pill? Are you out of your mind? You know, what yeah. would you say to that rant? Oh, I, I, I agree with you 100%, and that's why we are going to... And that's what's wrong with insurance. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm forced to pay taxes to buy Grandpa a $10 pill to have sex with his own wife. Hey, here's an idea. Why don't you buy your own $10 ED pill yourself? Mm -hmm. Because maybe if you had to buy your ED pills, well, if you're $375... Um, after, um, I mean, what would that be? Uh, 37 uh, days times 10. I mean, basically one month of not having sex, you could pay cash. I don't think you should buy people's ED pills. Uh, I just don't. Um, mm -hmm. All these issues, it, it, like insurance covering um, birth control pills. What, why am I buying your, you? why am I buying your birth? If you want to have sex and not have a baby, isn't that your deal? I agree. If you want to eat Oreos until you can't have sex, maybe if you had to buy Viagra and Cialis yourself, I mean, humans need skin in the game mm -hmm. or they don't change their behavior. And typically the ones that come in and pay this 375 have that skin in the game, yeah. right? Because now they're paying, they're paying for Hell this yeah. program. We have um, when you're, when you're in with the idea. When you're a nine-year-old, you buy her a bike for Christmas, she'll leave it in the front yard, lay it on the grass. Mm -hmm. If she has to pay for half of it, she'll park it in her room mm -hmm. and protect it. Exactly, exactly. So it is, too, going and identifying with those people, like, why do you want to change, you know? Is it that you can't move because you're so obese, right? What can we do? We go to those people and, hey, come in. Even if we just change their nutrition, we can start to help them. And it's nothing about giving them a pill or giving them um, a, a script of any kind. It's all about using whole foods for their metabolism. And it slowly comes off. It is a lifestyle change. It's not a fad diet. And this is, a, this is a healthy way of eating for life, right? And so we have a lot of people that come in and they bring their entire family in. So mom, dad, and kids. And they all get on the program together because they can hold each other accountable and they're all eating together. And I'll tell you what, whenever we have someone come into the clinic, we ask, do you have a spouse? 
because we'd like for them to come in as well. Well, you can you need tell that, if you they need have that a spouse because they're sad and depressed. You need that. <laughs> you're right. You need that support system, you know. And so I'll tell you, it has been um, the clinical side of things with it being only people that are coming in that if it's covered by insurance, um, we get to some of them, but we don't get to all of them. And it's really disheartening. On our performance side, we get to almost 100% of them. Yeah. And they want it, and they want to make the change, and they are excited to make the change, and then we track them. They come in as well every three months. And we continue with, with the software that, that I created. I can overlay their results. What, what do you mean you created? You got a programmer? Yeah. yeah are you serious? I did. You're yeah. an intense dude. Yeah. Thank you. You are. Thanks. You know, I just want people, you know, when people can actually visualize and they can see that improvement, um, are you on, it's very are you powerful. On, are you on Twitter? Um, no, we're not on Twitter. Okay, can I? We're on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, can and I that's take a you to, Spark thank, Systems? Can I take you to school now? Why that is not good? What Twitter? Facebook and Instagram. Oh. So Facebook um, on Shark Tank, Mark Cuban, he mm -hmm. paid all this money on Facebook ads, built up a million followers, and found out that if he makes a post that doesn't go to a million people, you have to boost the post with money. Okay. Instagram was bought by Zuckerberg. You know, I know, um, did you know Mark Zuckerberg's dad is a dentist? Oh. oh and he's a friend of mine. He's been in here three times on my, really? on my podcast. Cool. Um, Zuckerberg bought Instagram for a billion, but the only reason it's not pay to play, it's free, is because he's trying to kill Snapchat. Mm. But as soon as Snapchat is dead, you'll have to pay on Instagram. Why is Trump the president? Because at night, there are a million people watching CNN, three million people watching Fox News and Trump. Will you Google how many Trump how many people were following Trump on Twitter at the time of election before he was POTUS? He was tweeting directly to mil 10 times that amount of people. Mm -hmm. So when you build up, so the only thing that's free, Instagram is free now, and the only secret to lower price is lower cost. Instagram's free now, but it'll be pay to play as soon as Snap is dead. But Twitter, um, it's free. If you make a post on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. it goes to all your followers free. Um, uh, Pinterest is free. Uh, Google Plus is free. You should put all your effort on everything that's free. And, the, and LinkedIn, Instagram, everybody's at Desert Vista and Mountain Point. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn, everybody has a job. Right. With, it was uh, basically 45 million. Yeah, so who, he didn't care what CNN was saying to a million people. He was tweeting to 45 million people mm -hmm. and nobody got it. All those, I mean, there was like 18 candidates. And he's like, well, how they, well, those guys were all trying to raise money to buy ads on TV when no one even watches TV under 50 years old. And here's Trump at three in the morning on the toilet tweeting to 45 million people and walked in the White House. The only reason I'm taking you to school on that is because Tukey Town, mm -hmm. free. Twitter, free. LinkedIn free. Will LinkedIn. you Twitter about me? On, What's that? Will you Twitter about me on your Twitter account? Absolutely. Okay, that'd be but, awesome. But but what you should do is you should take a picture of me and you. You should start a Twitter account, and then um, you tweet that out, and then you tag me at Howard Fran. Then I'll retweet it to twenty five thousand followers on Twitter. I got wow. I got thirty five thousand followers on LinkedIn, three hundred thousand on Facebook, fourteen thousand Instagram. Um, How many employees do you have? 52, 53. How about we do a corporate wellness program with your employees? Well, th yeah, talk about that next because you mm -hmm. actually, how I heard of you was actually not on Twitter since you're not there. Mm -hmm. um, I heard of you, um, actually, what, what is the date today? This is the... Uh, the second. The second. It was actually, um, I did a podcast with Tammy Rolls. Mm -hmm. Oh, at the Hub. And, and you actually... Your equipment is mobile? Correct. And you go into the hub, and Tammy was you're singing your praises. Oh, yeah. She's wonderful, by the way. And the hub is such a cool, cool place to work out. Well, it sounds like it's like Friends. I mean, when she kept talking, I thought she was singing the Friends. That, that a lot of people, they go to uh, Lifetime Fitness, or they go to... Uh, they go to places that they might be around 100 people, but they're all alone. Mm -hmm. And she said, you want to go to a place where everyone knows your name. Like and cheers. she has this little, like, cheers, like this little cheers tribe. I think they are. Like 139 is, people. It is such a community. And yeah. they are so supportive of each other. They bring in great programs, which um, 
Mark Godfrey, the one of the owners of the hub. Um, he and I were good friends, and I came to him and said, "Hey, tell him to come on the show." Absolutely, I said, "I said, Godfrey, I have this program, I have this mobile system. I would love to come in and talk to your clients about it and see if we can. I can come in and actually do the testing in your facility." And he was like, "I love it. Anything that can give my clients more tools and to be successful." And he goes, "Your program." Phenomenal. And so I did. I came in to the hub. I gave a seminar. They invited everybody from the hub to come in. I think we ended up having maybe there were 34, 35 people that showed up for just the educational seminar. So you got a third of the people. You got it. So I had their head trainer, Craig Downey, who is excellent, by the way. He was actually doing a, he did a demonstration of the MET test while we were while I was giving the seminar so everyone was able to watch Craig who they adore and love but also as he's getting to the upper ends of that test it's getting really difficult and so they're cheering him on go 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 come on Craig let's go let's go and they're also watching him i mean at the end of this test he is like working extremely hard and then we put his results up on the board and we talked about his results to to all of his clients and at the end, we said, okay, we will be here next week for two days. And we opened up, sign up right then. And we had 21 people sign up right okay, then. Okay, so you have like, I'm envisioning like a van. Yep. And, and it has a hydraulic lift in it. So we wheel the equipment up and the bike in there. And then we can go anywhere in the valley. But do you take the, the test in the van? No. You actually, we... Take the take the equipment, equipment out of the inside and go inside whatever facility, a gym, um, a business, um, any clinic, and we bring the equipment in, we perform the test, and then we load the equipment up and we're out. You know, when I was little, the only thing I ever wanted was a treehouse. Mm. And I'd always beg my parents for a treehouse, and they'd always say, no, Howie, we got to live in the van. Uh. And... Uh, <laughs> so um so you um you go to <laughs> Tammy <laughs> Ryan like that one. You go to Tammy Rolls um the hub dot com. Yep, the hub fitness. The hub fitness dot com. Mm -hmm. By God, I love that woman. She has she She's got is, so much energy. She she's I don't think there's anyone more upbeat and optimistic uh, and has more uh, cheer. If that's a thing, yeah. um, then uh, that woman, God dang, she's amazing. So, so, so what do you? So, what do you? Like, again, that's a big demon you're fighting. They're so you're saying, you know, I, I listen to Tammy, and we're gonna release you right after Tammy, so it's a one-two punch. And if you have a three-four punch, if yeah. you want to send someone, I, I would send that Benny plates there. Yeah, we could do uh, because that. Because some of my dentist friends in Alwatuki um, had amazing success with meal delivery, but a lot of them are sitting there saying. Dude, I, I just, I don't have the energy. I, I, I'm, I'm burned out, I'm tired, I'm fat. I'm, I know what I need to do. I mean, everyone knows, I assume, when you go to Wendy's and, they, and you order a hamburger and they say, would you, would you like cheese on that? You know that's not probably a good idea. So what, what do you say to people who just say, God, I'm just, uh, the motivation part. How, how do you help them on the motivation part? Right, well, first we have to identify. We have to at least get them to go, I want to make a change, you know, because... If they don't have that, then it doesn't matter what we do, really, right? So they have to want to make that change. And once they decide that they want to make that change and they come in, then they're going to be extremely successful because we're going to be with them every step of the way as well. We're going to be those Tammies that are cheering them on, right? And we're going to have that. We're going to create that support crew around them in order to help them be successful. And what happens is after they get past that first like two weeks and they begin to feel good and they're sleeping good it is like i never want to feel that way yeah. again you know so is would it be safe to say that you're a professional athlete is, is it safe to say that if you made it to a professionally cycling a professional athlete that it's just all internal you but for the rest they kind of need that group thing i mean like I think, what's the difference between someone who needs a personal trainer? I mean, you couldn't have been to the top with a personal trainer. You, you, that was probably all you. You have to have some self-drive, but also, no, I create a community around me, right? So my community, if I wanted to be a professional athlete, I needed to have a physical therapist. I needed to have a nutritionist or a registered dietitian helping me with helping me with meals. I needed someone that, if uh, potentially a um, 
uh, a chiropractor, um, someone that I went to for mental wellness. So maybe even a, like a sports psychologist, you know. Um, so all of these people, I created a community. Plus my friends, my family. It's massive. And that's the only way that you are going to be successful is to create that community around you. The hub, they've got that little kind of built in. Built well, in everything community. I've already read, everything I've always read says you're basically a summary of the five people you spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. So I saw that in college. Um, one of the best moves I ever made in my whole life is when I went to college, I said, okay, if you hang out with five people who don't want to study and they're here to find girls and go drinking, you're going to end up, you're, right. they're going to hang you on. Like so, attracts like, right? So, so the, so when I checked in my room on 915, 9th floor of Swanson Hall, Omaha, Nebraska, um, 1980, I said to myself, do not become friends with people who you know are going to flunk out and be drunks and crazy. And so I picked four friends. It was Gary Asaldi, Randy Kerwin, Joe Dovkin, and uh, Lawrence Sench. And by God, we all became dentists. <laughs> uh, John Lease is an endodontist in L.A. Uh, Joe Dovkin was an endodontist in Paradise Valley who just passed away of cancer I'm last sorry. year. Um, Randy Kerwin's a dentist in Kansas. Gary's all. But, but so if you go to thehubfitness.com, and everybody there is saying, come on, we need to do this. We need to eat right. We need to work out. So if you, if you put yourself in a community of people who want to get healthy, you'll get healthy. But if you yeah. sit there and it's like at work. Well, if you hang out with Jamal and every night after work he wants to go um, to the bar, well, that's all good and fun. But you're going to be drinking at the bar eating mm -hmm. deep fried cheese. But if Jerry says, let's go to the hub, you know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. it's the people you like you like you probably wouldn't have married a fat chain smoking guy who smokes pot every night after work. Right. Safe to say. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And two, my my husband um, is is competitive in his own way, but he's a very happy go lucky oh. guy kind of guy. Where was he born? Raised? Um, Georgia. In Ringgold, I, Georgia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Georgia, Mississippi, huh? Yep. Out so, here in Arizona, though. So what do you do when uh, Georgia plays um, um, Alabama? Oh, Alabama. Ooh. No, you said he was from. He was from Georgia. Yeah, he's from Georgia. So what do you do when Georgia plays Ole Miss? When they play Ole Miss, well, you we're guys like we're torn, and we actually went to Oxford. Mississippi last year for the Georgia Ole Miss game. Yeah. And hotty toddy Ole Miss won. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh. But so anyway, we, our company, we actually handle or work with what I would say are kind of like four different groups of people. So we have this clinical side, right? Um, then we have a corporate wellness side. And when I say corporate wellness, most people think automatically big, huge corporations. It doesn't matter if it's big or if it's small. We actually have a dentist that has five employees that came to us and said, I want, Who's the dentist? I want a corporate wellness program. He's in Conway, Arkansas. His name is Steve Pasco. And wow, he said, I have, find Steve Pasco. He go, it's, uh, what is his, uh, dental tooth, tooth acres or something like that cool. in, in Conway, Arkansas. And he said, I have, I have five employees. And he said, and I want them to all get on your program. And he said, I want to pay for all of them. This is something that I want them to have challenges, you know, within the, within the practice together and they all need to get healthy. And I, I want to pay for that for them. Um, and you know, so almost probably the 80, 20 year old, 80% of my friends are dentists and the other 20% are probably family, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, it's so true. We were talking about the, the, you're a summary of the five best people. Mm -hmm. So many dentists I know, they couldn't lose weight and get healthy when their hygienist was bringing in Dunkin' Donuts and the other ones bringing in Krispy Kremes. And so the office said, we need to do this together. And they started with little things instead of saying, okay, instead of always um, having a pizza delivered, you know, to eat in the break room in between patients, um, let's have the office manager go to Safeway every morning and buy a couple of vegetable platters. Mm -hmm. And they just started that little thing like, no more pizza and just vegetable platters. And then when everybody lost like two or three pounds, they said, okay, well let's step it up at lunch 
Instead of walking across the street to the Mexican restaurant, why don't we walk a three mile loop? So yeah. you can still clean teeth out. I mean, you're not like sweating and oozing BO, but you're removing instead of in consuming um, pepperoni. But you're so right. The media always talks about the Fortune 500. They don't even employ 15% of America. Go through all your friends and family. Yeah. How many of your friends and family work for a publicly traded Fortune 500? It gets all the news, but what is the average business in America? 25 employees or less doing less than a million a year, mm -hmm. and that's your tribe, and you sleep eight hours a day, but you work with these people eight hours a day, and if you get your tribe to align themselves with the same goal, like, let's just be healthier. Mm -hmm. um, that's how you really it's get powerful, It's right? very powerful. Because when you're falling off the wagon and saying, let's order, let's order breakfast burritos from the Burrito King, you need a coworker to say, let's go to Safeway and get a vegetable platter. Yep. So what I did with Benny Plates as well is now I have some of the uh, doctors, some of the clinics that I work in, they have lunch delivered every day um, for from maybe pharmaceutical sales reps. And so what I did, I contacted the pharmaceutical sales reps and I said, hey, I have tested all of these employees in this clinic, in this doctor's office, and they all have their individual meal plans for their metabolism. And the doctor wants to have, instead of you bringing in um, Chipotle or Qdoba or whatever it is that, that you're bringing in for lunch, call Benny Plates and they have on file those individuals who have tested and now we're gonna have you deliver those meals for the employees in the clinic. So now they're at least getting one meal a day for their metabolism. And the pharmaceutical sales rep, they don't care where it's coming from. You know, they're like, that makes it pretty easy. Now, so, you, now you live in Albuquerque, right? Mm -hmm. That might be confusing. Some of you might be saying, how that's not fair. I tried to get on your show. She's in Tempe. Why is she not on show? Well, you have to live in Tempe. You, I mean, you, you live. I live in Albuquerque. You, you, yeah. you got you to live in Albuquerque or your yeah. business in Albuquerque. But if you live in Chandler and your business is in Tempe, then, I mean, I don't want this to be about Albuquerque. Right. But Albuquerque just got its first Chipotle. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, over yeah. by Trader Joe's. Yeah, and is it by Trader Joe's? Mm -hmm. The thing is, I mean, it's it's amazing. I'm, you know, everybody's like really smart in their one thing, their their one career. You know, what I mean, if we work at Intel, I'm sure you know everything there is about your your one thing. But it's amazing how many people say, "Oh yeah, I go to Chipotle because it's all healthy ingredients mm -hmm. and all that stuff." But then when you're looking at that thing that you ordered i mean it's a like burrito, that's, baby that's just i mean it might be all natural and all good and there's tooth fairy dust on it and it was <laughs> delivered by a unicorn but god dang that's bigger than your stomach i know so i mean i mean what do you think that average healthy burrito um, how many calories is that what percent of your day's calories is that probably all of them yeah so there's just um nutrition's just weird because unless someone really takes it as serious as you do, I mean, you could actually overeat on healthy stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. My dad, I remember he would say, you know, Anna, every morning I make a shake. And I was like, oh, you do? What do you, what do you put in it? Well, I put some, I put a handful, he goes, it's all good stuff. And I was like, okay. And he goes, I put a handful of blueberries, a handful of strawberries, a banana. I put a cup of oatmeal in there. I put a little milk in there. And I put uh, some honey. I put some, a handful of nuts. And I'm like, oh my gosh, dad. I'm like, that's like a 3,000 calorie shake that you just had. And he goes, well, but it's all good stuff. And I'm like, that doesn't, that doesn't matter though. You know, like it's great, but why do you need all of that in there? Well, I'm just trying to get all of it in, you know? And I'm like, but then you're gonna be hungry again, because how much sugar? So what was the actual composition of that shake too? All of that sugar, you're gonna be starving again in less than an hour, even though you just and had And a lot of people don't realize calories. that um, um, when they come home every night and drink beer and wine, that that's, that's mm -hmm. sugar leading that's to sugar type two too. diabetes. Yeah. So when you're saying that window of time is to, um, that you, you, your goal is to just eat between 10 and six, eight hours, so on a 24 hour day, what's 24 minus eight, um, you would be? Oh, 16? Is it 16? So, so you would be having insulin so would... activity for eight hours and no insulin activity mm -hmm. for 16 hours. Right. But so when you said 6 p.m., but if they're sitting there in front of the TV, 
um, having a couple of beers or a couple of glasses of wine, that's all sugar too. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Right? So they need to be done with that drink by that 6 p.m. Six. as well, right? Or so if they're like, whoa, hold on, I, I get home from work, there's no way I can be done by 6, well then you can go 7, but this on the front end, start eating a little bit later then. If you want to stay within well, isn't, that. Isn't the thing but the you norm figure, that most people skip breakfast anyway? You fig well, actually, you always heard that breakfast was the most important meal of the day and that everybody needs to eat breakfast, but if you're not hungry... And if you stopped eating by that time, you may not be hungry in the morning. But you morning. know, it's funny because people are, um, you know, I only know one subject. I mean, I went to nine years of college, studied dentistry. I've done dentistry. There. I only really know one thing. But if you get on the Internet and you do search on dentistry, I mean, it's like almost all the information. I mean, like water fluoridation is toxic. It's not mm -hmm. this. It's not that. What does everybody have cancer have in common? They all had a root canal. I mean, um, when people start talking about fake news, like like you look at that food pyramid, well, it, it the food pyramid mostly correlates to farm subsidies. Um, here we have a country where obesity is the number one problem, and they spend billions of dollars a week on corn farmer subsidies, Sugar. and then those yeah. corn farmers get mad at the inner city people in Phoenix on welfare. The biggest welfare queens are food farmers getting corn, I mean, they, they don't subsidize root canals, fillings, and crowns. Mm -hmm. And 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 when you look at that food, it's hard for me as a dentist to believe the the food, the, um, what what is it, the, um, is it the FDA? The or, FDA. So that, it, but, yeah. But I, I can't believe the farm deal because the proportions are exactly to federal subsidies for farmers. So back in the, back in the 60s, 70s, the head of the FDA was also the president of the sugar industry. Oh, yeah. So everything that is FDA approved and has those like juice boxes. You know, we are celebrating my daughter's birthday tomorrow and we were laying out exactly what we wanted to have food wise. And my husband, I said, we're not doing juice boxes. We're not doing juice for these kids because what does it do? It is just all sugar. It's just like giving them crack cocaine. Did you, you know? uh, did you see the uh, video I made for my uh on apple juice for my kids. No, I didn't see it. I found it. Did you just watch this for two yeah. minutes? You have to watch that for two minutes. That is sugar. Oh, it's right by us. Pretty cool, huh? That's awesome. But now, every time Taylor comes over, she says, can we do that experiment again? <laughs> but um, I think uh, um, I think you've been amazing. Um, uh, I can't believe I asked you to come over for an hour and you went an hour and a half. Oh, geez. Um, Sorry about that. No, no, hell no. This, this was um, just amazing. Um, so how did people contact you? So you can reach us on our, our website. Um, you can go to sparksystems.net. Um, on there, there is an email address. Um, there is a phone What's number. What's your email? Info at sparksystems.net. Okay. Um, and yeah, get in touch with us. You can also go to advancedmetabolictesting.com. Um, on there, it will say info at spark systems. And I just want to give you uh, one, um, one story. It's tough when you're a dentist, you don't want to break any HIPAA violation, but I remember all, the most motivation I ever had for me is when I just opened up my practice, there was a guy who, you know, a lot of people would uh, move out here because they just retired and he was 65 and he was very sad because um, he um, smoked four packs a day his whole career, and then he went to retire, and he had emphysema, and um, he wasn't gonna be able to do anything, and they went to put him on all this stuff, and uh, he decided um, the heck with that, and he walked the Awatuki Elliott Loop, which is a three-mile loop, every morning, every night, at a fast pace, and every year, his breathing got better and better and better, and then his wife, who never smoked, but was sedative and overweight, she actually died before he did by far. He's still alive. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say his name, but if you see somebody who retired when I opened up my practice 30 years ago, and he walks so damn fast, I mean, I have 55, I can barely stop and catch him, but instead of just saying, oh, I have COPD, I have emphysema, I threw in the towel, he decided to go out there and change his lifestyle and he's still alive today. And when you're hiking on South Mountain and around here in Alwatuki, so this stuff is, um, 
I mean, if you had a disease, would you rather go pharmaceutical or change your lifestyle? Change your lifestyle. Yeah, and uh, yeah. and and what's also amazing is the um, the head of um, um, John Hopkins Psychiatric Unit, one of the most preeminent mental health experts in the world, says with the exception of schizophrenia, you know, people have depression. Well, you know, you have depression because you wake up to a Starbucks and a cigarette and a lunch you eat Taco Bell and then at dinner you go drink alcohol and cheese and then you take a pill that when you do 45 minutes of daily exercise seven days a week, all those um, diseases get better. Mm -hmm. And I mean, so um, so mental health, you, you can't abuse your body 24 hours a day and then take a pill. Right. And, Doesn't um, work. And I yes. would love for you to come in and do I'm our doing, testing. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing yeah, it. No absolutely. questions asked. Absolutely. No that questions way asked. You can and Twitter where, where about do you it. live? Do you live close to me? Yeah. I live uh, on, App on Appaloosa, right by the roundabout. In a oh, that's right. You told me by yeah. the roundabout, mm -hmm. uh, which is very common in France. I was very yes. surprised. That they put that, that in, right? We built a French roundabout. It always makes me think of that um, uh, vacation holiday. What was that? Um, oh, not Christmas vacation. Um, inter, um, uh, National Lampoon's um, European vacation. Oh, my God. That Hilarious. So I know. Chevy Chase, and they're Chevy just Chase, going Chevy around. Chevy Chase. They're just my going gosh, around uh, the yeah. roundabout. I like, but uh, anyway, um, thank you so much for Thanks coming. Thanks for having me. And our show, and to keep the value chain going, um, you have other people to help them um, get along because um, um, your meal planning guy, any, any other people, uh, because a lot of it takes repetition, repetition, repetition before and someone says, I'm going to make a change. You got it. All right. Thank you so thank much you. for coming by.